Girls. So welcome back to Faithful Good Friday. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about a case that takes place in New York, but um, the woman that actually committed the murder came all the way from Italy. So let's just go ahead and get started. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed, think you're something out of my head. Our story, of course, starts with Maria. She was born on October 24th, 1868 in southern Italy. In 1893, her and her family actually moved from Italy to New York. Um, her dream, she obviously was working as a seamstress, but her dreams were eventually to become a wife and a mother. Um, one day while she was actually out, she runs and she ends up meeting a man named Dominico who was running a shoe shine business. And because they both just happened to be from the same little area in Italy, that made her to be like very comfortable with him. And so the parents, Maria's parents ended up finding out about Dominico. And of course they went to meet him. So they, she invites him over to dinner. And for some reason he never ends up showing up. And I, oh. So of course things are going at least somewhat well until Dominico asked for Maria to have sex. Because he mind they're not married. And back this is the 1800s. So you know that was a big like, that was largely frowned upon as so obviously she said no and then this destroys like the fantasy she basically had of the she goes to her mother asking for advice as you do the mother says cut off all contact with him which she did and then like months later he bumps months later she said he uh they start talking to, to each other again and he claims that he loves her and that he wants to marry her bullshit Bullshit. So Maria, of course, being excited that she found someone to apparently marry her, she goes and runs home to her parents. Maria and Dominico apparently go on a date, but apparently without her knowing, he actually drugs her. He says he's gonna take her back to the, uh, take her back to her house. He ends up taking her to a hotel where he eventually rapes her and basically takes her virginity. I am disgusting uh, eventually maria obviously wakes up so she realizes what happens and then dominico tells her that in fact he'll never marry her so then of course maria asks why because again he just took her virginity and he said that he actually had a wife and kids home, back home in italy and i oh so of course maria she of course doesn't believe him and then asks you know like what about her like where you know you know, she's going to need someone to be married to now. And he claims that he'll find someone, but she has to claim that she's a widow, which would explain why she wasn't a virgin. And so Maria, of course, apparently not having any other options, she actually went back to her mom to ask for help to get, to convince Dominico to marry her. And so then Dominico says he'll do it, but he needs $200. And you would do it too for a check. And so, of course, remember, this was like a poor family. So like $200 is asking for a lot because $200 back then equates about $6,000 as of the time I'm, I'm recording this video. So of course now the mother sees this as basically like a lost cause. So then she walks away and then Maria's like, oh, this is actually your last chance. Dominico, Dominico then proceeds to tell her that not even a pig would marry her. Emotional damage. So then of course she takes out a razor and basically slits his throat. Damn! So then of course, because this was a public murder, Maria eventually of course gets arrested. Uh, she actually was booked apparently under the wrong name, Maria. Barbary. Uh, Maria is, of course, charged with first degree murder. They said the original motive as to like why she killed him, the, the reason why, was because of $825 that he had in his bank account, which $825 back then apparently equates to about twenty-five grand as of right now. And you would do it too for a check. Uh, well, this, of course, being the 1800s, there was an all bail jury, unfortunately, and they didn't hear about the rape and they just saw it as like a random public murder, which apparently that was why she was actually charged with murder. Uh, the judge apparently held back information that probably would have helped Maria's case, including the fact that allegedly Dominico apparently went for a knife first, and also the fact that apparently the judge told the jury not to have any mercy on Maria. And so after 45 minutes, the jury obviously rules her guilty. She is sentenced to um, the electric chair, which apparently she was the second woman to ever be sentenced to it because the electric chair had recently just been invented, like a couple years back. 
Uh, she was actually sentenced to be at the Sing Sing prison until her eventual execution. Uh, even actually learned English from apparently the warden and the warden's wife, which, you know, that was nice. Uh, her story, of course, caught national attention, and apparently there were even dolls of her made in New York City. And so, of course, there ended up being calls for a redo because Maria wasn't treated fairly, evidence was apparently withheld from the jury, and the fact that they, the belief that executing a woman despite her committing murder was deemed immoral. And so then there then there comes along this woman named Cora Slocum, which apparently she's a tap she's American, but she married like an Italian noble person. She heard about the case, and so she basically like hired lawyers for Maria's like retrial. And so apparently her actual story, you know, including the rape, that part was apparently mentioned for the first time in court. Uh, she walks, uh, the jury goes into deliberation again, and after 40 minutes, she's deemed not guilty and actually walks out of court. Uh, Maria apparently meets another man from her native village named Fris Francisco, Francisco, Paulo, Bruno, and they end up having a son named Frederick together. Uh, apparently, they end up, unfortunately, end up getting divorced, but she does end up remarrying, and not much, not anything really is known about her life past 1902. It is said that she apparently died in 1902, but from what I found, I believe that she probably died in like 1950. Of course, there's like a family tree down below, the last link. You check it out yourself. And so, yeah, that's basically the case of Maria Barbella. Unfortunately, this case is not as well done as it should be. And so, luckily, I, along with like maybe like two other YouTube videos I could find, have covered this case. And so, yeah, I hope you learned something new today. And I will see you fail females on the next one. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed, think you're something out of my nightmares, see me right there. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, then will you get bored of killing me? Silhouettes of you.